All right, this is take two. And I uh, don't have time to go back. So any big mistakes? Well, that's just going we're just going to have to go with it. So welcome to April 21st and well welcome to 420 if you're seeing this on Wednesday the 20th of April. We're looking at 420. So happy 420 everybody. This is a surf report for the next week for 21 through 27 and I'm calling it the musical chairs of life as this music starts then the music is going to stop and then a chair will be pulled out and the people running around it well we're going we're going to lose one person because they will lose that's how musical chairs works and so it is with the leadership today threatening that we're going to have scarcity and short uh, on food and supplies and yada yada. Is it going to happen this week? Well, the overlap does seem to suggest that, and I'll explain all uh, why I think that. But um, but it doesn't come. It comes with other consequences, both good and bad. And the good side of things is that the Dreambot says awakening. There's clearly an awakening happening. And uh, as we look at the Dreambot, I'm excited to show you this because it really is. Um, uh, it, it's focused on awakening. I'll just put it that way. Now, the I Ching is hexagram 60, and it talks about limits and connections. So limits, when we think about limits in astrology, we're thinking about Saturn. Well, Saturn is it's the only planet over in Aquarius, and Saturn represents well, hardship and uh, challenges, but and also limitations, but also like way of life, status quo, foundation, government. And with Saturn in Aquarius, Saturn or the way of life or the status quo becomes more Aquarian. And then with the pressure on it, because there's a square there, Mercury square Saturn. So now our thoughts are pressurized into the status quo thing. And it's becoming more Aquarian. So more disclosure, more secrets out in the open, more freedom, more humanitarian, more true humanitarian. In the past, there's been a lot of hijacking or under, underlying manipulation or agendas with false um, humanitarian, where it just looks like we're benefiting humanity when really we're trying to control it. For example, well, that takes this away, Saturn and Aquarius. And then, of course, we got the eclipses coming in. So we have this lull period just before this big wave of eclipse energy. All right. And so in this lull, we have sun going into Taurus. We have the big Jupiter, Neptune, Venus, which I think is the biggest part of this awakening process. Although the limits is going to produce quite a big awakening. Um, we have Mercury going over the North Node, so it puts our our thoughts out into the future. And then we have planets even more consolidated, less than 120 degrees on one side of the circle of the Zodiac. And we'll talk about what that might feel like. Um, there's a lot here. All right. So let's go ahead and get started now. Hey, if you have not subscribed, please say take a moment now to hit the subscribe button. Give me an up arrow if you en enjoy these videos, if they provide help to you. And give me a rumble over on Rumble. A big shout out to all of you watching on Rumble. Your channel is growing over there, but so is YouTube. Still growing, and I appreciate all of you. So just rifling through these comments... First, big shout out to Maria. Chris, I am so glad you are wearing LifeWave patches and sharing them here. So glad Terry introduced me to you. Well, look at this, Mary. There's my patch. That's my glutathione patch right there. Glutathione is the number one antioxidant that tends to decay over time, especially people like me who are 50 or older. Your glutathione naturally is just going to start to deteriorate. Well, this bumps it up 300%. And so now I have this huge 
antioxidant being, uh, my body has a big ability to detox. I also have the X39, X49 combination, which boosts the glutathione thion patch even more, possibly up to a thousand percent higher. And I have yet to see any disadvantage from that activity, only advantages. In fact, my beard continues to change more back to the, the original color away from silver and gray. And um, not that that's the only thing you get. I get a boost of energy. I feel sharper. I sleep better since I'm wearing the patches. So shout out to all of you guys who are wearing those patches and sharing those. If, uh, if a lot of you who don't have that want to get started on that, go over to www.lifewave.com slash intersention. If you go down to the show notes, you can just click on the link below. It's the very first link in there and you can support the channel, but you can also make yourself healthier with this new phototherapy energy. Now, my first shout out was for not for me to say I had that comment in here because there's so many comments here, I had to delete it on my first run through. So not for me to say, basically says, I do not consent to control and evil. I only consent to freedom and values and free will, something like that. Nah. So huge shout out for those comments, both on Rumble and YouTube and some other notables is no one you know says a whole lot of the much larger ones. Uh, they're talking about the Telegram channel in response to my comment last week where uh, people, it seemed like people are just leaving and I'm wondering if Telegram is just sort of dying. Um, but but uh, no one you know says a whole lot of the much larger ones channels have become so infested with spammers and paid shills that it's not a really good use of limited time to wade through all that dreck. I couldn't agree more, and I didn't even th see it from that perspective. But uh, why does social media always seem to turn into such an antisocial experience once it reaches a certain critical mass? Well, there didn't even think about it that way, but there's an advantage of having smaller channels, much easier to um, keep it clean without censorship. And then a shout out to Wendy says, by the way, blood moons, eclipses are signs for non-believers to turn back to God. There have been so, so many signs for unbelievers in the last five years. Well, well said. And we and were speaking about the blood moons, uh, one blood moon that's coming up and the eclipses. We have two of those coming up on April 30th and May 15th. So we get to Talk about those. Love this comment from my name is D. Jupiter. Love that. Obviously talking about Jupiter. And Doran Pat says, about right for YouTube. Most of my comment has a line drawn through it. I will take that as a compliment, YouTube. And I'm wondering if the algorithm saw the comments about the past life and the gruesome details in there and decided to line through it. But you can still read it, so I don't know what that... Does is that normal for YouTube to put lines through there? Whatever. Well, the win. Well, shout out to Doran Pat. Thanks for your comment. And Melanie says, not not only says, but has the winning trophy this week. Congratulations to Mel uh, Melanie. Says thank you, Chris and Angie, and thanks for including Angie in there. I manifest best when I visualize and then release it to the universe. Often what comes to fruition is better than what I foresaw. <laughs> Absolutely well said. Letting go is the hard part there. Struggling, putting it into your consciousness. We were talking about mind is the builder for so long. And it's more important now than it ever was as we get into the fourth density. Fifth density, according to the law of one, the thoughts are much more potent and much more manifesting. So got to be careful. It's a double-edged sword. Uh, whatever you think about comes easier and manifests easier and more imminent. And the timing is lessened before it does manifest. All right. Now, before we get into the astrology, let me show you the dream bot. You're going to like this one. Linguistic set number one. See, waking, heard, learn, <clears throat> September... That's really interesting. The word September is in here, and that is very, very 
out of place. That's not normal for the another month to be here. The only normal word associated with a month would be April because we're in April, maybe May, but typically once we get into May, you'll start seeing that word and then it'll drop away. But September in the middle of April shows up. That is significant. Now, does that correlate with the sea of waking and hearing and learning people, the great awakening? Does that mean the great awakenings in September? I don't know, but take a snapshot of this in your mind. Take a mental snapshot and remember. In the middle on 420, oh, by the way, 420. Welcome. If you're watching this on 420, welcome, everybody. And uh, 420 is significant for a lot of folks. Um, but anyway, take a note on that. Then on 420, there was a dream bot that talked about September, sort of in the context of the Great Awakening. All of the red here imply Great Awakening. Imagine mind, eyes, eye. And then you even have the anti-awakening, the asleep. I put that in dashed arrows there. So... A lot of exciting stuff there for, for uh, the awakening. And why is it awakening? Well, that's what the musical chairs is all about. Limitation is like the musical chairs for life. That's sort of like the uh, tacos for life. I put that for life in there. Musical chairs, meaning that the limits are food and scarcity supposedly coming. And you've seen these barges on the coast of uh, China, probably due to the Shanghai um, control grid thing. Everything's going down. No ships coming in or going out. Everything is halted and it's massive. And these cargo ships are carrying supplies or waiting to get filled up. Anyway, those aren't happening. And so the folks over on, I can't remember the channels, are predicting that just imminently for a long time because it takes time to get finally get those ships uh, filled and back. So stock up now, I'm guessing. But anyway, I Ching says limits and connections. The limits creates a musical chair feeling, sensation, like there's not going to be enough. And so you're going to have people start hoarding or maybe taking money out. And then the whole ball of wax begins. Now, is it beginning this week? I don't know. I'm just sort of going with what the I Ching says and what the astrology says. And then the result's going to be the dream bot, the awakening. All right, getting into the astrology. Still in waiting mode for this peace breaking out thing. This is going to be represented by, in history, not on the... Jupiter and, and uh, Neptune conjunction, which happened on the 12th. But in history, it was a couple weeks surrounding that conjunction. So we're getting into that couple of weeks after. And so it is high time to see some, some really beneficial things of living together in harmony breaking out. We also have the partial solar eclipse coming on the 30th. And I actually have a slide. I brought a slide for you. It's right here. That's April 30th. Here it is. Here's the eclipse on the 30th. And I'm going to delete this once uh, we get through it so I can bring in the other eclipse and show you that. But on the 30th, and this is for your planning, you've got a blood moon. Oh, I'm sorry. We have a solar eclipse in... Taurus. And what's really cool here is that you've got this layout with Uranus and those three planets, sun, moon together. That's the definition of a solar eclipse. The moon's going to fly uh, and eclipse in front of the sun and it's going to be a partial. And, um, they're, they're laid out to where, so we've got change agent Uranus in this mix right at the new moon. And it makes a, an opportunity, it makes sextiles with Mars, the ability to carry things out in a Piscean way. 
And so you've got that. You have this, remember I talked about the Mercury and Saturn? That is just at the edge. This is aging out. So this is a very weak square. You have uh, much stronger to have uh, Mercury trine Pluto on that day. But anyway, the biggest energy here, um, other than just the eclipse energy itself, which represents a new beginning, and uh, some people put a six-month um, time limit on that, and that really pushes us out very close to September. September is not quite six months, but you also have Uranus. So this is very transformative, very change-oriented, but also freedom loving. It's very Aquarian, just what we talked about with Saturn Aquarius. And so this whole eclipse period, this next few months, six months, has that energetic stamp of Uranus on it. And it's not like Uranus owns this thing or rules this activity or this eclipse, but it's in the mix. It's four degrees away, and that's an influence. That's a that's a good amount of the mad scientist to be in this Taurus Taurus new moon eclipse. The Taurus part of this is a very much about worth, what is of value. Value is a big thing with uh, Taurus, experiencing the finer things and making sure that you're on the right track. Um, so it's a motor. It's a motor that doesn't like to stop. It's, it's hardworking. And um, how you work or how you gain value all changes. Now, what you value then is going to be based on your own individual chart, but um, you can look that up on where this eclipse is happening in your own personal chart. And that's what's what you're going to, how your change of value or change of direction for you in that Taurus energy. All right, so that's the upcoming eclipse on the 30th. And then on the 15th, you've got the blood moon. This is a full blood moon lunar eclipse. So now this is the full moon, and the full moon is in Scorpio. I can darken this a little bit to help you. And this one happens to be on the south node. So there's a lot more happening in here. We'll talk about more of this in the future, but you got Uranus is now out of the picture, 10 degrees away, but sun is over the north node, three degrees, um, in a real loose conjunction with Mercury, but it's more potent to talk about the north node it is shining up on the south node and so the craziness is uh sort of the the place to end up is going into the past with this south node um, eclipse it's return to the past obsessive past we're talking about scorpio and we'll talk about more of these eclipses but we have a scorpio full blood uh, lunar eclipse that's happening on the 15th of May coming up. All right. But in this next week, we have the sun is now in Taurus. Um, we have the sun and Pluto in a square, and that's that's pretty much aging out here, which is nice. And we have this development of all these sextiles. The main square is that Mercury square Saturn that I keep referring to. And that goes exact midway through our surf week through in that in the weekend. And this is where it's going to be very pressurized between thoughts and mind and the way you communicate and pressured with the hardship, the limitation, the um, changing of the Aquarian status quo more Aquarian, but it's not easy and it comes with limitations. And in the limitations comes togetherness because we also have, where is it? Well, we have the Venus and Neptune coming into a conjunction. It might be down here somewhere. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that too. Let's get into it. Thursday, the 21st. We have the sun is in Taurus, so making the ego state much more grounded, much more steadfast, can be bullheaded at times, but seeking value, seeking worth is a big concern for the Taurus ego. 
There's a sextile in there with Mars that gives it the ability to an opportunity to carry new things out in a very Taurus way. So finding more value. And then we have that square. This is this is grounded but bullheaded thoughts, challenged square, challenged by the uh, the continued onslaught of disclosure. So part of this status quo of Saturn and the hardship is about towards the Aquarian lens, which is uh, more disclosure, more secrets being revealed. It just continues to chisel away, and it's going to be hard. It's hard for the people who are receiving the secrets, hard for people who are being exposed by the secrets, hard on everybody, all right? except for the people who are Aquarians or who have been already through the great awakening in their personal lives and are ready for it. And that's most of us, right? All right. So Venus and Neptune, they just starting a conjunction. Now, this is what I was going to call financial escapism. I was also going to call relational escapism. Um, That's the downside to this energy. But the positive part of it is imagining a better relationship, imagining a better financial situation. On the other side of Neptune is Jupiter and Jupiter and Neptune still in a conjunction. This is what we referred to as peace before, high philosophical, dreamy, wise, sort of utopian energy. Uh, but it's uh, but Jupiter's also that higher e- economy or higher finance. Uh, and where Venus is more of the personal finance. So you've got um, bracketing the portal of escapism, which is Neptune in Pisces, by the way, is um, finance. So we've got financial escapism. Maybe there's a reason for financial escapism. Maybe the house of cards starts to decay or fall out. Once that first one goes, then the whole rest of it just accelerates. Everyone else tries to get to the ATM machine to get their money out. That's sort of this, it's a collective version, right? Because it's in Pisces. And so everyone's included in this. Everyone's in this musical chairs game that we call life. And it might be starting this week. I'm not promising and I'm not predicting anything financial. This is not financial advice. But I think you might see signs of financial escapism here. And then there's this hidden, this is a really hidden one, but slow one. It's going to be there for a while. Sextile between Jupiter and Pluto, opportunities in cyclic obliteration of wealth. (laughs) So there's like, uh, but it's an opportunity, right? Because wealth is neither created nor destroyed. It's just transferred. So if you can place yourself according to this sextile in a place where wealth is generated, by the destruction of wealth, uh, you can get the get it transferred to you. That's sort of what we saw in the last couple of years. You saw a lot of the ruling class just happened to be in the place in in the place where all the wealth was going and benefited by it. So it's almost like it was a planned thing. Hmm. Strange. Friday the twenty second got a lot of the same, but we got. massive opportunities. And as these opportunities play out, I'm going to show this a little bit more on a different slide or a different day, but there's a lot of sextiles represents big, healthy opportunity times for you, but not a whole lot of outlets to go. So limitations in the opportunity, big conduit, short amount of options. Okay. In this trine, so Mercury trine Pluto is exacerbated by the moon going over Pluto here. Conscious awareness of Pluto opportunities. Conscious awareness because the aware zodiac sign is Taurus. It's very aware because it's got the five senses through there. So mind is very aware, very conscious out in the real world. An easy energy with Pluto, which is the hidden power, the hidden ruler, the hidden control, the hidden annihilator. But normally that's all secret. 
but the conscious mind can pick up on it on Friday the 22nd and, you know, in, in the days around that too. So be aware that you are aware of what Pluto is doing and that will give you some clues as to how to best utilize these sextiles. We'll talk about those a little more as we go along. So I had a couple of archetypes for the for these sextiles. First, massive opportunity relationally, financially, and with escapism in there. So escapism isn't always a bad thing. This is opportunity to get out. Think about that for a while. So um, you can have this as an opportunity because it's a sextile. So opportunity to get out financially, relationally. Escapism is not always bad. And where to? To deep, powerful, transformative depths with Pluto. Pluto is the annihilator. And also Moon, to be honest with you, is the emotions. And emotions are, by their very nature, very subconscious and deep. So it's all deep down in here on Friday the 22nd. But we have massive opportunities. With that, we also have uh, wise use of a cult opens doors to subconscious power. And that's and you look at these sextiles, they don't really include Venus, so it's not like a relational thing. It's more of this is the occult because of Pluto, I'm sorry, Neptune in Pisces. These are all the far out planets, and the far out planets is the depths of the psyche, the inner parts, the innermost parts of the subconscious. So you've got the occult opens doors to the super conscious power. So now we're so deep into the Pluto thing or into the subconscious. This is according to Edgar Cayce. Um, who else? I'm thinking Henry Reed was uh, part of the ARE. Anyway, through the subconscious is where you got to go to get to the super conscious. The super conscious is where we're all connected and threaded together into the string theory that's not necessarily part of Edgar Casey's material. Sorry, I didn't want to connect too many dots here. But according to them, you get through the subconscious to this place where ultimate creativity come. Um, it's, uh, it's connected at all layers with everything else. It's all aware and it, it's timeless. So it shows you the past, the future, and the present moment all as one. And um, magic, magic happens there. Well, real magic. That's the super conscious. So anyway, big opportunities here. I don't want to understate those. Now, what I want to focus on, on on this day, but this is true for the whole week, is you notice once the moon exits this area, there's nothing here. The south node is just a node. It's just a point. And so you've got no planets, no influences down here. And everything is consolidated in less than 114 degrees. So I want you to imagine, it sort of looks like an eye, but I didn't mean to. Just imagine a wheel, and there's a big weight on just one part of that wheel. So it like, it like it spins faster around the, the weight. And so um, not a time faster, but imagine that lopsidedness feels it's going to go uh, string, uh, swing really strong at some times. And then this lull of like nothing, that's sort of the nature of what we're going to be feeling throughout this week is this, you know, that kind of energy where it comes on really strong and focused and then nothing slow and then it speeds up and then slow, you know, over and over again. So, Look out for that. That's part of that musical chairs of life feeling too. Um, um, I've got another square here. No, uh, no, that's the same square. So we're looking at Mercury and Saturn, and it it goes exact here, heavy on future thoughts. So as it goes exact, Mercury and Saturn in a square, Mercury is over the North Node. So. Good awareness, good logical, rational awareness of future thoughts. 
And and because it's in Taurus, North Node in Taurus, and so is Mercury, obviously, we're looking at, again, the worth of things, the value. So it could be financial as well. And that can feed into your ability to see the future there in your rational mind can feed into that opportunity for financial escapism as Venus and Jupiter um, get more balanced between uh, outside of Neptune. All right, what did I miss there? All right, let's go on to Sunday, the 24th. Now, um, especially right now, Moon is in Aquarius, but soon it will be in Pisces. And when it does, look at what we have. We have all these planets, st stellium in, in different parts, part of fortune in Taurus. And we also have the, the moon will be in Pisces. So we have water, mainly just water and Earth. You also have Pluto, which is also Earth. So the only planets that will be out of this is not a planet, but the uh, Chiron and um, Saturn. Saturn will be in Aquarius. But after the moon gets into Pisces, we're looking at only water and Earth. So Earth and water is experiencing the unseen world. So the Earth part is experience. It's the five senses. It's grounded, ironically, in the other world, the unseen world, like the transpersonal one foot in each reality. You got one foot in the real world, eh, we call it the real world. Maybe that's the other world's the real world, right? In dreams and, uh, uh, I don't want to even say, just the transpersonal, everything that's unexplainable per se in the physical reality. Action in water. Okay, so you have the action planet of Mars in water. And so you have the action in water and the outlets are in earth. So the opportunities, sextiles, are in earth. So you got the action over here in water, sextiles over to these points, mainly mind and thinking. Look at all those alignments with Mercury. So thoughts are all over the place. Some of them are pressurized, but they're future oriented and they're very oriented towards worth, finance, and value. Monday, the 25th. All right. So a little update on Venus now. Venus, 22 degrees. Neptune, 24 degrees. So we're about two degrees away. And then Neptune and Jupiter have about two degrees away. So we are equidistant. We're balanced between the, the different types of finances with Neptune. Could we have some sort of financial escapism? It could be. Relational financial planets equidistant from the mystical escape. That's what we're looking for here. We have a lot of sextiles. One, two, three, four, five, six. And aging out now, aging out squares. So a lot of opportunity almost entirely earth and water and heavy on sextiles, heavy on opportunity. Te uh, Tuesday, the 26th, the opportunities actually build and pressure continues to subside. We have relational escapism increases because Venus is coming into uh, Neptune. And we have opportunities increasing but with limited, and I stress limited, uh, channels of those opportunities. So one of them is Pluto, and the other one is mind. And by the way, those things, Mercury has still has that trine with Pluto. So limited opportunities, remember that. It goes with our I Ching of limits. And then last day of our surf week is the 27th. Um, this is where Venus and Neptune go exact or at 24, lots of opportunities there. So when escapism happens, there's only two places to go, mind, future mind, and inward, Pluto. 
two directions, outlets, either to the reliable mind and calm um, communication and travel, or more goal-oriented, because it's in Capricorn, annihilation, regeneration, deep inner power, or transformation of forms. When we get into the rave, you're going to see how this is a a direct quote from there. The deep inner power, um, this part, or transformation of forms. That's with Pluto is transformation and Capricorn is an earth sign that's goal oriented. And so forms, it forms something transformation of 3d reality. All right. I know this is a lot. We're at 35 minutes. Hang with me here. We'll almost get to the most important part in my opinion, which is the solution slide. And I'll put it all together for you. This is the I Ching reading. 60, hexagram 60 was limits and connections. Financial wealth, escapism creates limits and limits forces connections as we self-organize because of these limits. The limits is from Mercury square Saturn. Limits are necessary to channel energy, guide purpose, and lend direction to life. In human affairs, the making of decisions and alliances necessarily implies limitation. For in, choose, for in choosing one path, another must be left behind. Think about that. So part of this limit this week is you choosing your outlet, your opportunities. But once you choose, oh, oh, okay, I've made my decision, and so now I'm limited. Again, we haven't gotten to the decision yet, so it's not saying that you need to delay your decision. So we haven't even gotten to that part yet. Line two says when limits in a particular situation have suddenly become, have been overcome, nervously hesitating to act is bound to be a mistake. Seize the moment, but don't be nervous about it. You have to go in with a lot of knowing, a lot of rationality, calm, Line three says, take initiative and find pleasure inside the bounds of what is fair and honorable. Line five says, do not ask others to wear a yoke you would be unwilling to carry on your own shoulders. So don't be a hypocrite this week. Here's the solution. We put these change changes in. We've seen this quite a bit lately. It's the darkening of the light. 36. When the light goes down, it may be wise to become invisible. Even the smallest sound, faintest glow of light can attract unwanted attention now. When the darkness of stupidity reigns in human affairs, it is best to keep your brilliance hidden under a bushel. Don't let yourself be swept along with the current of conventional wisdom. Do not needlessly stimulate forces of opposition. So the seeds of awakening have already clearly been planted. It is not necessary, in fact, maybe counterproductive to do a lot more pushing people to awaken. All right, at this point, right now, this week, I would not be doing a lot of pushing. I'd be sitting a little bit further back. All right, putting uh, Saturn, our planet of limitations, into the calculator, and we get hexagram 49 of the rave and Capricorn, Capricorn solution. So 49 in the rave is revolution. Ideally, the transformation of forms, there it is, transformation of forms based on the highest principles and not simply for power. Wouldn't that have been nice the last couple of years? It's been all about power, right? Have you seen it? So now it's transformation based on highest principles instead of power. Line six is the attraction, the power of revolution in action to expand its support. An innate impression ability that transforms the fence sitter into the committed, the sensitivity and potential to embrace and transform others. So it's not your responsibility to go out and awaken everybody this week. It's about seeing who is being affected, being opening, and coming to the other side and welcoming those people in. That's your job, right? All right, let's go see the final slide and make sure we're on the right setting here. Here's musical chairs for life. 
if you've ever played, it can get very aggressive, but all these people are typically having fun and most of them will bond through it. So that's why we have limits because a chair is going to be pulled out or food's going to be off the shelf or money's going to be taken out of the ATM probably. Uh, but in, all in all, there's no way, r- way around it. It's going to actually connect us in one way or another. In addition to awakening us, making necessary connections guarantees limitations. And that's the reverse side of this. It's on a continuum, actually. Is it the dog wagging the tail or the tail wagging the dog? It's both. In this case, so as you make connections, we're going to guarantee limitations. This is the period prior to the solar eclipse in Taurus with massive opportunity. This is the lull before a huge energetic wave. Oh my gosh, (laughs) I forgot to put the the phrase in here. Uh, I knew I forgot something. We'll make it up as we go, whatever feels right, okay? So remember, when we're doing the triangulation here on the solution slide, this is how we should behave, right? So the I Ching 36 says, recede into the background, avoid creating too much attention, uh, watch out for other be- people guilt tripping you or don't be guilt tripping others, and be reserved and cautious. The rave said, the power of revolution in action to expand its support and innate impressionability that transforms the fence sitter into the committed. There's nothing you have to do about it uh, other than accept those people that are coming to the other side and who are new to the awakening. So Daryl Capricorn says ambitious, prudent, responsible. I think this is going to be a really good energy to um, to use going forward. Um, Behaviorally, uh, we need to avoid fear. We need to stay calm. That's sort of hard for the Capricorns but easy to be ambitious and prudent and responsible and, and uh, driven. All right, here we go. Rest assured, surfers, the seeds of awakening, the seeds of awakened thinking have been planted. It's now time to watch the seeds grow. The ray of assures that impressionability requirements have been met and the seeds of transformation will be sprouting. Furthermore, and perhaps more importantly, the limitation is promised by your leadership, by the way, will incite grounded connection, most likely from bitching, sneering cynicism at public gatherings. According to our triangulation, this isn't an invitation for you to join the bitch fest and open complaining. Allow the growth in revolution to manifest naturally, and you can watch quietly. Remember, they have to experience these things. You can't show them. Focus your gratitude into the group that is transforming and welcome them in with open heart. The Capricorn solution reminds you to continue to uh, just work hard, stay grounded, be disciplined, and remember your goals. Be cautious about articulating resentment. Don't express pessimism, etc. Remember, this is the lull before the big energetic wave of the two upcoming transformative eclipses, one of those conjunct with Uranus, so massive acceleration of freedom, technology, higher level, mad science technology, release of documents in a very Aquarian status quo as Mercury square Saturn continue that trend. So if you want a phrase to get you through this particular week, I think it's, um, I am open heart for the awakening. I am open for, to accept the awakened. And by putting that into your mind, that also adds to the collective version of the law of attraction. Seeing people awakening and seeing people being accepted. It's just generating more and more peace around the world. Okay. All right. Well, it's uh, been a nice time with you all. I hope I didn't make too many mistakes, but I don't mind your critiques. And um, boy, I I forgot Easter of all things last week. (laughs) 
I even talked about how Easter is calculated in previous serves. So you can see how much is on my mind and how busy I am, but there's no excuses. And I'm not dogging myself. Thank you all for your help. And uh, we'll have a great week. We'll see you next week for another one. And we'll talk about the eclipses more in more detail and see where that energy is. All right. Take care. Enjoy the lull. Enjoy the limitations. Enjoy the musical chairs of life. Bye now.